Hello and welcome to Mythical Meeples. Today I'll be doing a subclass review for Grim Hollow, this time looking at the Warlock patron, the first vampire. For those of you who don't know, Grim Hollow is a dark fantasy setting for D&D 5th edition. It offers players new races, subclasses, spells, magic items, and the ability to transform. Um, so you become a lich, vampire, werewolf, among other creatures. It also ha There's also the monster book, so there's a whole range of monsters for DMs. And you also have the campaign guide, which contains various rules for playing games in the land of Ephorus. Today we are looking at the first vampire patron for warlocks though. So like most warlocks you get an expanded spell list, false life, bane, alter self, levitate, kunja animals, gaseous form, dominate beast, great invisibility, dominate pursing and seeming. So thematically these fit very very well for vampires. Um, you've got levitate for flight, You've got Greater Invisibility and Dominate Potion, which are both known by the Vampire spe Spellcaster variant. And just feels very vampiric to me. So at level 1, you also gain two other features. The first of these is the Nocturnal Predator. And you gain Dark Vision up to a range of 60 feet if you don't have it. And increase it by 60 feet if you do have it. You also get the Drain Life feature. So when you use the attack action or cast a spell, you can use a bonus action on the same turn to make a melee spell attack against a creature within five feet of you, which deals necrotic damage equal to 1d6 plus your charisma modifier on hit. You can also expend the spell slot when you do this attack to deal an extra 1d8 necrotic damage to the target plus an additional 1d8 per level of the spell slot. So if you go for second level, you'll be doing 3d8 you go for 5th level, you'll be doing 68 necrotic damage. And when you use the spell slot to enhance the attack, you regain hit point equal to the damage dealt. This feels incredibly strong to me. Um, just that ability to do all that extra damage and regain the hit points. However, it does mean if your character's doing that, they're not casting other spells, so it probably balances itself out. Um, it definitely leans towards a melee based warlock for me, so one going for Pact of the Chain, and that's uh, Pact of the Blade, sorry, and that's probably which um, Pact I'd go for. Or perhaps taking something like Lightning Lure to pull enemies closer when you hit them with a spell. At 6th level, you gain Creature of the Night which lets you use your action to cast Polymorph on yourself to transform into a bat or a wolf. So again, we've got very heavy on the vampire theme, as you might expect. Um, you, but in these forms, you can retain your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. You can do this use this feature a number of times equal to your charisma modifier as well, regaining them upon the completion of a long rest. So this seems quite useful, very thematic. If you need to go and scout something out, you can turn into a bat, fly around, or you could turn into a wolf if you were sort of coming around a lot of wolves. Especially useful if you don't have something like a druid in your party um, or someone else with the polymorph spell because it gives, just gives you that extra versatility. So level 10, you gain Eldritch Appetite. And so when you reduce a creature to zero point hit points with your life, uh, drain life feature, you can use your reaction to regain one of your expended pact spell slots. So probably the one you've just used to kill that creature. Um, you can only do this once per long rest though, but it is a very good way of just getting that spell slot back very quickly. Very useful in sort of long drawn out fights or boss fights just to make sure you're hitting as hard as you can, as often as you can. So at 14th level, you gain Eternal Night. Uh, so you're ba you've been granted a taste of immortality by your vampire patron. You stop aging, and you gain resistance and necrotic damage. You also gain a once per long rest ability, which allows you, you use a bonus action to do it. 
and you regain the benefits you are gain are you regain 1d6 hit points at the start of your turn if as long as you have at least one hit point and aren't in direct sunlight or running water if you take radiant damage or damage from holy water however the trait stops functioning much in the same way as a monster vampire you also benefit from your drain life feature and you count as using it as if you're expending a first level spell slot so you are always doing that additional 2d8 extra necrotic damage from it and regaining hit points whilst you've got this effect active it is once per long rest however so you need to make sure you're timing it for a fight where you really need it so if you come up against the boss and you want to just keep hitting them and not dying you want to use this um the you should in theory be regaining a lot of hit points every turn um i don't find a lot of evil creatures have radiant damage um but if you're playing an evil campaign where you are the bad guys you may find that you're coming up against a lot of radiant damage and not really benefiting so much from this feature so overall i feel like this is a starts off very strong and then starts to level out a bit more um the drain life feature just seems really beneficial you've essentially got an extra attack every single turn and you don't even have to do weapon fight just seems very very good um, but that might just be how it looks on paper and it probably plays out a lot more balanced than it seems um, in terms of eldritch invocations I would recommend something like Grasp of Hadar to move creatures towards you so you can hit them with your drain life. Armor of Shadows, I think that's pretty much a given for most warlocks, but just that extra AC if you're going to be being combat base. Relentless Hex, if you're taking the Hex spell, um, just for that extra damage when you hit the creature with an attack. And Maya the Mind, which allows you to cast slow once per day. Um, which means that the creatures have their AC reduced, so if you're hitting them with a melee attack, you're more likely to hit and benefit from your drain life feature. So yeah, as I said, overall, love the theme. I really want to play a warlock of the first vampire now, and go for a very melee-based player, I think. I feel like you've got a lot of options for role-playing as well, especially... Um, if you're still being playing good or neutral um, because you've got to work out why your character is serving this vampire so yes overall love this subclass really looking forward to trying it out what do you think though if you let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe you can support me as well by becoming a member of mythical meeples or becoming a patron. I'll be putting links in the description below. And once again, thank you for watching, thank you for the support, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.